Hello and Namaste. It's been around 46 years that Nepal and Finland have established their diplomatic bilateral relations. Uh, so basically, today we have with us the ambassador of Finland to Nepal, Perti Etinen. We'll be talking about Nepal-Finland relations among other issues. Excellency, welcome to Cover Hub. Thank you. Uh, Excellency, it's been around 46 years that Nepal and Finland have established their bilateral relationships, uh, diplomatic relations. So how do you analyze Nepal-Finland relations? Yeah, Nepal-Finland relations um, have a long history, I would say. Um, and uh, since 1980s, we have been partners in development, development cooperation. 1992 embassy was established here and uh, uh, Nepal is one of Finland's long-term partner countries in development so we are very much committed to Nepal's people's well-being trying to be helpful here together with the partnership with different stakeholders including the government of Nepal civil society business community and so on like talking about uh, relations, what are your priorities? What is Finland's priority here? Um, Finland's priority in terms of why we are here, it's, it, it goes back to this development partnership. So Finland's priority always has been help Nepal. Also during the very different, difficult times, you know, during this internal conflict, we stand by you, we were helping people, we try to be helpful in the peace process. During um, the incidency period? Yes, okay. yes, during the peace process, um, contributing to constitution making at that time. Also also helping helping Nepal in the past and at the moment in, in, in many ways. Um, um, this is not the only thing, obviously. Um, we, we wish to see our develop, uh, not only the development, but also, let's say, trade partnership maybe to be uh, stronger. Um, Finland is a market for Nepal's products, you know, Finland is part of the European Union. Mm -hmm. So if everything but arms regime, trade regime applies to Finland also. So quarter fee, tariff free, mm -hmm. access to Finnish market. So I always, in this kind of situation, I, I want to encourage Nepal's business community also to take this very seriously. So we are there and we are ready to do business with Nepal. But also our business community is, is interested in coming to Nepal and and uh, have a fruitful cooperation here in the Nepal is growing growing market, knowing that due to some like corona situation the uh, situation is a bit bit difficult at the moment, but I'm I'm sure that this it will improve in the future. I think the COVID, uh, coronavirus has, you know, pandemic has affected adversely in many aspects. Uh, I mean, of course, yes. you know, now if you're talking about uh, the corona pandemic and its impacts, um, um, you know, it's been quite quiet, you know, for, for the past uh, mm -hmm. one year because uh, obviously um, travel has been difficult, you know. We were planning our Ministry for Development Trade coming here last April, so we were very, very much prepared, you know, mm -hmm. for for his visit here and uh, in April. But it was just when the corona started, the real mm -hmm. big time, and so we had to postpone that meeting. Uh, that would have been very useful in terms of boosting our bilateral relations okay. even further. There were other visits on uh, in the pipeline. Um, that was planned for April. Yeah, uh, last April. Last you April. Know, okay. Remember, there was this Sagramada summit. Summit, you know? yeah. So he was Sambat. supposed to come, yeah. Sa Sagramada yeah. Sambat, Sambat, and yeah. also have a business delegation, you know, Finnish mm -hmm. business people coming. We are hopeful, hopeful that we can do it, Not if not this year, hopefully next year, when the situation okay. gets a bit uh, clearer and better. Um, but um, if I'm talking I'm still on Corona, um, I'm rather pleased how we actually were able to deal with that uh, difficult times in terms of our development cooperation because mm -hmm. uh, we, we were able to repurpose uh, some of the funding to address the corona uh, related challenges on uh, uh, our program implementation in terms of water and sanitation which is mm -hmm. our biggest 
joint program here with a budget of 60 million euro total budget, which is quite a handsome figure in Sudurbashim and Karnali provinces. I mean, nothing was delayed, so all the contractions were actually ongoing. We, we had a very good cooperation with local um, municipalities, local governments, you know, to allow the construction to go on. So we are actually going beyond our original targets the last oh, year yeah. in terms of numbers of schemes, number of people that got clean water through our program, which is like, I think, the total uh, number of beneficiaries is now 350,000 individuals, yeah. which is a big one. And that's a and big also, number. Yeah. Also thanks to European Union because they are co-financing it. Okay. Um, and uh, also in some other programs we were able to, to redirect funds to address the COVID challenges. Plus, I'm also happy to tell you that we, 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 we are able to make an extra contribution from 2.5 million uh, euros that mm -hmm. goes to the education sector because schools okay. as you know they have suffered a lot you know the students p pupils in schools have suffered a lot so we through government can re-channel this channel this additional funding to help schools and school sector education sector to 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 face with the corona challenges Okay, fine. Uh, like you talked about education, we talked about water and sanitation. A significant number of like uh, Finnish communities or say, you know, uh, Finnish civil society organizations are already in Nepal, mm -hmm. they are working. So how do you rate uh, their contribution here? That, that's actually a very long, last, long, long history for the civil society, mm -hmm. CSL cooperation. And if I'm not mistaken, at the moment we have 17, so one seven mm -hmm. uh, Finnish NGOs with programs here through their local counterparts. So the Finnish NGOs themselves are not implementing, it's the local counterparts mm -hmm. that are implementing projects here and that. And uh, when I read this list of projects, you know, I can see that it is my understanding that they very much are are complementing what what the government's trying to do you know they focus mostly on social sector social services uh, helping helping also in education sector um, um, even 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 in the health sector you know so so they they are doing um, to me doing some some work it's really close to the communities and helping the communities cope with the challenges that that are there and i i have to emphasize the role of civil society to facing challenges such as corona and covid you know and no government no government including mine we cannot cope those mm -hmm. huge challenges you know that what that communities <coughs> individuals are facing so we need civil society helping being helpful being supportive and being part of this problem solution. They, civil society is not the problem, they are pro part of the problem solution. This is, yeah. this is how we see it in Finland, in Europe, and, and how we see uh, our civil society contribution here in Nepal. So can we expect, we in terms of Nepal, any new Finland funded projects in the near future or after this, uh, after this pandemic subsides? Uh, Yes, if you want me to break good news, yes, you can. Um, mm. um, <laughs> incidentally, only yesterday I had, oh, we had a meeting with our Minister for Development and uh, Foreign Trade um, in Finland. So we had an online meeting with him, okay. discussing actually Nepal. Mm -hmm. Nepal's, uh, um, we have drafted a strategy, new strategy for Nepal 20, for 2021-24, for four years program. Four years, okay. And also a program attached or ideas about the program with a financing frame. Mm -hmm. He has to sign it. I cannot, re you, know, I, you know, it's too early to say anything about the details, but uh, our proposal that we commit another four years program here in Nepal, we will focus, likely to focus the sectors that I may have mentioned earlier, uh, water and sanitation and livelihoods, maybe adding a bit more of the climate change related issues. 
education, because education has been there for uh, some time, and education, I think, is one of the key elements of success of Nepal. It was a key element of success of Finland, mm-hmm. and it's, it's for, so important for Nepal also to, to increase the quality of education, uh, to increase attendance of marginalized groups to schools and so on. So those issues are very dear to our hearts. So we, we, we would like to continue our support to education. And also gender equality is the third one. And gender equality, um, Kovida, you might agree with me, you know, <laughs> it's, it's so important that uh, the women here in Nepal have an equal role in the society, in politics, in, uh, in business, in the public life, in, 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 in all, all walks of life, you know. So, again, something that the Scandinavia, including Finland, Nordics, what we have experienced, that uh, women's role, women's participation, to highest extent possible in the society is, is so, so important. In Finland we have a <coughs> woman as a prime minister, mm-hmm. I think she's 35 years 36. now. 36. 36, okay, yeah. you are checked, very mm-hmm. good. Uh, and so we have even a new generation and also female-led, women-led uh, govern- government mm-hmm. at the moment, which, which I think it's a, it's a, it's a step forward in, also in our case. So those three areas will hopefully remain there and uh, we, will, we will start programming accordingly, um, subject to signature by oh, our great. That's we a are great news. For that. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. For Especially us also, for, because yeah, for we are also, yeah. so much working for that, mm-hmm. um, for that uh, preparation of that. I think that's a good news. Um, so, you know, talking about, uh, about projects, uh, could you please, uh, please explain a bit about, you know, like Fin Partners in yeah. brief, in brief. So what and how is it expanding in our country, Nepal? Yeah. No, the, in addition, what we do on a country to country level, you know, like uh, working with the government or through government Nepal or, or other, other implementing agencies or stakeholders, we also have this very specific and uh, how to say, complementary instruments, financing instruments. And uh, Fin Partnership is a kind of business to business cooperation instrument. So it is, is it, is, it is focused on private sector cooperation. So it's not the government to government, it's private sector to, pri- let's say, private enterprises to private enterprises. Enterprise. Okay. So if a Finnish company wishes to come, come to Nepal and they find a partner here, partner company that they want to do business Collaborate. with it, okay. perhaps even from the Finnish side, make an investment. So this Fin partnership is an instrument that, that um, can help financially to overcome some of the hurdles, you know, like doing market studies or pilot projects, for instance, mm-hmm. and, uh, and so on together with the, with the Nepali business, business community, community or partner, you know. Yeah. So that is, that is basically facilitate this, this business uh, partnerships. And, uh, and uh, I think recently we have had um, under implementation, I may be mistaken, but uh, six projects, you know, between companies, you know. Mm-hmm. We don't always get the details because there are some, mm-hmm. you know, business, mm-hmm confidential issues, but, but this is my understanding. So Nepal is one of those countries that businesses have found them, you know, themselves, you know, um, doing together something. But it's also the beauty of this instrument is that it also helps export-oriented companies from, from the partner countries such as Nepal, you know, so they can actually apply funding mm-hmm. to start exporting to Finnish market. So just before Corona, uh, there were, for instance, some tea and coffee company who was in, you know, interested going to Finnish market. So I think they were they approached the uh, Fin partnership to get see, seek some help. You know, and uh, actually, they went to Finland, and uh, unfortunately, then Corona came. I don't know okay. how how it was, you know, 
develops later on. But uh, this this is actually something that also can be kept in mind that Fin Partnership also tries to help development ex export for development country to to Finland. You know. Um, yeah, that's just in brief, you know, basically, basically it's a financial in instrument and the private sector can... can so like basically uh, only in the SARC region, are there other countries as well? In this yeah, this, this applies to, to those countries that fulfill the criteria. In Nepal's case, obviously, you are the, still uh, in the category of least developed countries, so... Mm -hmm. But it's basically for development countries uh, that are not in this you know, how do I say, it? Fall, fall to that category. Um, it's actually, if you want to, maybe visit the, the, the Fin Partnership uh, website to get yeah. more, more, more information. I have been in the steering committee of that, that uh, instrument uh, when I was back home before coming to Nepal. So I know it, but you know, I start to forget a little bit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are all the details. And the third thing, obviously, is that they have this, um, what do you call it, uh, database for companies who are interested to, to creating partnerships. So if mm -hmm. their Nepali company is interested, actually they could they could contact your local uh, focal point, who happened to be Nares Resta actually. Yeah. So Nares can can then maybe pass this information to 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 Finland and so they can include that partnership interested partnership company here so maybe find a matching part from uh, uh, for for, uh, for, uh, for from Finland. Okay, Excellency, like uh, you talked about, um, like European Union, they are also you know, Finland is uh, conducting in Nepal with uh, conducting some projects uh, in collaboration with the European Union. So how has been it? How has this been? Yeah, European Union is still a big player in terms of development funding here in Nepal. Um, they are actually quite a handsomely given the budget support or sector budget support to Nepal, so they, they are not running European, now I'm talking about European Union delegation, you know, European Union, they are not so much implementing of their own programs, uh, but they are working until now quite a, quite a lot through the government and their programs um, in, in many sectors. Um, we have this cooperation on the, we call it delegated, uh, delegated cooperation, um, for us, for Finland, this, this kind of delegated cooperation that we have in Sudut Pashim in the, in the far west, far west is quite novel. It's quite new for us. So in Nepal, Finland is, is a little bit, how would I say, pioneering this delegated EU cooperation in terms of joint funding. So mm -hmm. there is a special interest from our headquarters about our experiences that what we have communicated to headquarters so far is that that we have a very good, good sort of experiences of this cooperation. And I think it is very important to work together, to make bigger programs, bigger funding uh, pools, to be more effective. And this is actually what European Union on a policy level now wants. They're, they were talking about Team Europe initiatives. Mm -hmm. So doing more together, to be more focused on certain um, subject areas, problem solving together as, as, as a union, mm -hmm. not as a separate country actors or the EU commission or EU, EU, EU delegation in the country. Okay, Excellency. Excellency, uh, how do you see the deployment progress and its diversity in Nepal since you joined as the Finnish ambassador here in August 2018? Uh, within these three years now, or less, eight, two and a half years. Um, no, I, maybe it's good to take a, a longer perspective because we are talking about development in Nepal, talking about diversity uh, in Nepal. Um, I think we, we all know that Nepal has made a pro has made of progress, and uh, one of the very important development was to get out from the internal conflict. Because whenever there's a conflict, uh, when there's a political turbulence, it usually hampers the development, you know. And it took f for Nepal for 10 years to get out from that conflict. Really, I would say, 
the whole intercessions community was very impressed how it finally happened, you know. There was this new constitution of 2015, new structures, um, and, and so on. So, so that, that, is, that was a great, great achievement. And also we can see that the GDP per capita, you know, has increased, you know. Before Corona, maybe 7%, 6-7% per, per, per year, uh, which, was, which was a good progress, you know. Um, and, uh, and we can see, I mean, even when I visit in countryside, I can see lots of new buildings, you know. There is, there is more money maybe, maybe also because of remittances, but not only that. Like, there have been some development and that. Uh, and, uh, and, and so, um, and it's very important to maintain this momentum, you know. Um, but that, that is, that is, that is something which, which needs constant work because, again, looking from outside. What is needed? More business in this country, more sustainable in investments in this country. The investment environment, the business environment has to be supportive, conducive, conducive yeah. you know. I mean, these are issues <coughs> Can I can say in Finland, I can say in any country of the world yeah. because this is a very competitive world, you know. Yeah. Nobody is giving anything free, so you have to make some internal things all the time and not lose the focus on certain addressing certain thresholds, regular regulate regularly thresholds. What are the rules? You know, for you know, so all all those things have to be constantly under focus. You know, to make business grow, make business to flourish, and you also need more exports. You have to export more. I mean, that's a very crucial thing. Because I think Nepal is lacking. Yes, yes, this. and this is something which sometimes I wonder why. Why do I? Why don't? Why are not using European market? Because it's quota free, duty free. Mm -hmm. You know. Exactly. I mean, I mean, it's it's there, and just do something about it. You know, and uh, and 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 then then if you have that that part growing, you know, I think there's more bigger cake to be shared because you have to have the cake before sharing it. You know, that that's a big thing. You know. Um, and this is a recipe for any any country. I'm not pinpointing Nepal, you know, but but any any country in the in the in the region and, and, and in the whole world. Mm -hmm. So, Excellency, can you also share about the outstanding development that have taken place in area of maintaining people to people relation between the two countries, that is Finland and Nepal? Outstanding, outstanding uh, achievements. Um, I, th I I think there's. We have a quite long relationship, so so over the years, I think um, in Finland we know ne Nepal now better than than before. You know, I can tell you that Nepal has a very positive image in in Finland. Nepal is known, you know. It is it is Nepal is not a country that. Average Finn says, "Oh, I know nothing about Nepal." They always, "Oh, I, you know, I know somebody who's been there. I know there is a Nepali restaurant. I know some Nepali people in the restaurants. You know, oh, my daughter was there. You know, I, my husband is working. I mean, all all those, you know. So, so there is this people to t people Could relations protect, growing yeah. over the time, thanks to our develop development links, but also thanks to maybe now." particularly now growing student population from mm -hmm. Nepali students going to Finland. Mm -hmm. Finland has been a very generous. We have offered free education to everybody, so including the foreigners. Now there is a, can be a small fee, but it's not very, very substantial. So still studying in Finland in terms of any tuition fees is, is very low cost. and. Uh, so we had tried to make our country and society open for also those who can, cannot afford to pay the huge fees of, of you know, US uh, universities or higher education institutions or, or, or the UK. So we, 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 we welcome students from, from countries such as Nepal. And that number has been increasing every year more and more. 
students go into Nepal. If you ask how many there are at the moment, I have no... Don't have the number. Exactly. But there, we are talking about thousands now. Thousands. And, uh, I think there's a significant number. Yes, and, and, and many of them who actually have completed their uh, degree in Finland seem also to work in, in Finland at the moment. Unfortunately, the corona, corona again, you know, that has reduced the possibilities to work because restaurants, hotels, um, many other businesses are really suffering. So, so uh, that's that's a little bit tricky, tricky part of it. Uh, yeah. So this this kind of growing knowledge, at least from Finnish side, that Nepal is there. There are more Nepalis in Finland. Nepal is a great destination to come and visit. This this is this is good from my side. From the other side, we have now this Finnish educated Nepalese that know mm -hmm. Finland that hopefully also can play as a either <coughs> diaspora so. in Finland or returnees from Finland to Nepal to actually boost these hopefully business relations or or or, or research relations, what not, you know, I, I see lots of potential mm. there, actually. So, uh, Our Excellency, talking about the political scenario, political situation at the moment in Nepal, what is your observation? Or how do you analyze Nepal's current political situation? Um, yes, um, Nepal current political situation, what I know it, you know, it's, there's no parliament at the moment uh, sitting, um, there's talk about uh, the elections and uh, there is this um, Supreme, Supreme Court is, 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 is now coming out with the uh, with, uh, with verdict, with the ruling. Um, and uh, I think it's not only me, but it's the whole international community is now waiting for this Supreme Court's ruling. And uh, we'll see what happens then. Um, what I what I think um, is important here to to to, to be cool-headed, you know. I don't think that any violence to start with violence helps, you know. Um, so far, very little of that, you know. We are mm -hmm. everybody's very grateful, but you know, there there can be only peaceful solutions for any disputes that there are, you know. So the peaceful, maintaining the peace, peaceful procedures, not going to any violence by any, 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 any parties, any, any groups, any, any stakeholders. I think that is, that is very important. So, um, and uh, I think this is also what, what is the, what is the wish of, of, I mean, if you ask from somebody from the street, I guess yeah. it is the same, you know. But uh, yeah, but let's hope that uh, we have we, we see solutions for this current situation, and uh, and we have a we have a we have a situation where particularly our development uh, or any others, you know, our help could be then best utilized. Excellency, thank you so, so much for your time. Thank you. It was my pleasure.